Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar titled Attain Successful Single Cell Sequencing Results with the Latest Cell and Nuclei Isolation Workflows. This webinar is a part of the 10th Annual Genetics Virtual Week. I am Antonina Salcido of LabRoots and I will be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by LabRoots and sponsored by Miltony Biotech. For more information about Milton e Biotech, please go to miltonebiotech.com. Now let's get started. Before we begin, I'd like to remind everyone that this event is interactive. We encourage you to first participate by communicating with other attendees using our new live chat feature during the presentation. You can find the live chat located at the right of your screen. You can also participate by submitting as many questions as you would like during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click Submit. If you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation, click on the Help Desk button located at the bottom of your screen within the navigation bar or from the lobby. Finally, as a reminder, this presentation is educational and offers free continuing education credits. Click on the Continuing Education Credits link located in the abstract window below the presentation window and follow the process to obtain your credits. I now present Alina Steinbach, Product Manager for Flow Sorting at Miltony Biotech, and Karina Emery, Product Manager for Sample Preparation, also at Miltony Biotech. For a complete biography on our speakers, please visit the Biography tab at the left of your screen. Alina and Karina, you may now begin your presentation. So getting quality single cell sequencing data really starts with your sample. Um, so um, your sample has to meet certain pre prerequisites in order to generate reliable results. You need a debris-free single cell suspension with the viability ideally above 90%. Next to the prerequisites for the sample, there are also requirements for the preparation method of your sample. It should be fast and avoid changes in the gene expression pattern when possible, and you want to maintain the cellular composition of your sample. Preparing cells without introducing bias is a tough undertaking, and even when preparing PDMCs from blood samples, you already stress the cells and might upregulate stress genes. This becomes even more complex when isolating cells or nuclei from complex tissues. So in the end, whenever preparing samples for single cell genomics, you will most likely introduce some kind of bias that you should be aware of. Um, so let's uh, introduce Milteni's workflow solutions to help you achieve a sample that meets all the requirements in order to ge uh, generate reliable genomics data. When you work with solid tissue, um, um, so, oh, sorry, yeah, so here's our workflow. Uh, when you work with uh, solid tissue, you have to start with tissue dissociation, and actually even before that, you might have to store your tissue for some time. Um, if you're working with blood products, of course, you don't need to dissociate your tissue, um, but you do need to clean your sample. Um, so uh, cleaning your sample refers to removing debris or large um, aggregates. Um, after that, you have the optional step of isolating target cells. And then finally, you have to do your cell analysis or QC before proceeding on to your uh, single cell analysis experiment. Um, so let's look at the first step here, which is tissue storage. Um, so it's not often possible to begin processing tissue for single cell sequencing immediately after the tissue was harvested. For long-term storage, freezing and storing samples at minus 80 or in liquid nitrogen is one option. However, you should be aware that when SNAP frozen or frozen very quickly without a cryoprotectant, your tissue will lose the ability to isolate cells. So you'll have to do the analysis on the nuclei. Slow freezing with a cryoprotectant like DMSO will allow you to recover bi viable cells, but you should expect decreased viability. We recommend working with fresh samples whenever possible, which is why we developed the Max Tissue Storage Solution to maintain cell viability and cellular composition of fresh tissue stored at four degrees for up to 48 hours. 
Our tissue storage solution has been validated to prevent necrosis and apoptosis and maintain cellular composition and gene expression patterns. To demonstrate this, we dissociated mouse tumors either immediately after dissection or after storage in the tissue storage solution for either 24 hours or 48 hours at 4 degrees. We then used flow cytometry to measure viability, and as you can see in the graph on the left, we found no substantial differences in viability between the fresh and stored tissue. We also assessed gene expression in the fresh versus stored tissue, looking for differentially expressed genes in uh, stress and toxicity pathways. And as you can see, we did not find any upregulation in the stress genes after 24 or 48 hours of storage compared to freshly dissected tissue. Um, we don't have the data shown here, but we also have data to demonstrate that we are not altering cell type composition after um, storage for up to 24 or 48 hours. So after storage, the next step in the workflow is going to be our tissue dissociation. Here you have multiple options. You can dissociate tissue either with enzymes at 37 degrees, or you can try using a cold adapted enzyme at four degrees. You can also go without enzymes and uh, you can also go without enzymes and rely purely on mechanical force, or you can use an enzyme-free method for nuclei extraction. Each method has its pros and cons, which have been discussed in the literature. Cold adapted protocols are of interest to reduce the risk of gene expression alterations. We at Milteni have um, historically focused on on optimizing an enzymatic dissociation of tissues into single cells at 37 degrees because we have shown that this gives the highest cell viability and yield while preserving cellular composition. However, we know that for some genomic applications, nuclei are the starting material and that only nuclei can be obtained from some tissue, including SNAP frozen tissues. For these reasons, we've released a nuclei extraction buffer for tissue um, that just came out in April and which we will introduce shortly. Um, first, let's start with tissue dissociation into single cell suspensions. Well, Penny has developed the GentleMax technology for the dissociation of tissues into single cell suspensions. The Genomax system combines mechanical disruption with enzymatic di digestion, which enables both processing time and the amount of me mechanical force to be minimized, resulting in the fastest and most gentle treatment of cells possible. Some protocols use um, solely enzyme digestion, which is less efficient compared with the Genomax, as you can see in this graph where a customer compared a manual protocol for lamina propria digestion with the respective GentleMax protocol and found a much higher yield of Treg cells when using the GentleMax. Sole enzymes cannot reach areas within the tissue, making this method less effective and elongating the incubation time. The GentleMax constantly disrupts the tissue and therefore enzymes can efficiently be or can effectively reach all areas of the tissue. On the other hand, other protocols may opt to do the mechanical dissociation without any enzymatic digestion. We demonstrated this here by dissociating tumors either with or without using the enzymes in our tumor dissociation kit. As you can see, by using the enzymes in the tumor dissociation kit, we were able to increase the yield of activated T cells by over threefold. So here in the top panel, you can see we're getting um, in, multiple rec um, in multiple T cell types, a uh, yield of about 50% of our sample, whereas if we did not use the tumor dissociation kit, we were getting yields in the nine to 15% range of our sample. So by combining mechanical disruption and enzymatic digestion, enzymes concentrations and incubation times can be reduced to a minimum, which is also true for mechanical stress. 
because enzymes soften the tissue by digesting connective tissue and adhesion molecules. Furthermore, this can be done in a fully automated walk-away fashion and the process, and you can process up to eight samples at a time. Um, this means you can also reduce hands-on time and decrease variability as a result of tissue processing. Uh, furthermore, the Genomax technology has been shown to be compatible upstream of 10X Genomics products. To further enable reproducibility, we have developed over 20 tissue-specific dissociation kits with highly purified enzymes with known activity levels and lot-to-lot -lot consistency. For several of our kits, we provide lists of preserved epitopes, which will be important for experiments using feature barcoding such as SiteSeq. By combining these kits with over 40 predefined programs on the Genomax instrument, you can reliably attain high yields of viable cells time after time. As mentioned before, some tissues, such as SNAP frozen tissues, cannot, um, you cannot isolate cells from SNAP frozen tissues. The only option here is to extract the nuclei instead. Moreover, some genomic applications require nuclei as a starting material, and for this reason, we recent re recently released the nuclei extraction buffer that can be used in combination with the Genomax instruments and C-tubes. So here's our nuclei extraction um, workflow. You can start with up to 200 milligrams of tissue um, that's either fresh or frozen, and then you drop that tissue into a pre-chilled C-tube filled with chilled nuclei extraction buffer. The C-tube is then closed and placed onto the Genomax instrument where tissue lysis and homogenization is completed in only seven minutes. Moreover, up to eight samples can be processed in parallel. Then the nuclei suspension is washed and filtered and optionally further cleaned by sorting on the max quant title prior to a single nuclei uh, analysis. The nuclei extraction buffer can be used for virtually any tissue, including SNAP frozen or OCT embedded tissues, as well as fresh tissue. The graph on the right shows the yield for both snap frozen and fresh uh, tissue from mouse brain and tumor. The chart on the right shows the RIN values from RNA extracted from nuclei uh, suspensions from various tissues after being processed with or without the, uh, um, sorry, after being processed with our nuclei extraction workflow. This buffer has been validated for RNA analysis, and if performing a tax seek downstream, additional permanentization steps may be required after nuclei extraction. In the next step of the workflow, dissociated samples need to be cleaned from unwanted material, including cell clumps, steg cells, red blood cells, and debris. The same is true when working with blood samples. As we noted before for nuclei suspension, sample cleaning can be performed by flow sorting. But first, we will show you additional methods for cleaning up your cell suspension. It's important to filter cell suspensions to remove large debris and cell aggregates that can clog the microfluidics of single cell sequencing instruments like the 10X chromium. Milteni offers filters in a variety of mesh sizes. Our smart strainers are for filtering larger volumes and pre-separation filters are for smaller volumes. The filters can be stacked to filter your cell suspensions through de decreasing pore sizes in a single step. Smaller debris can be removed efficiently and easily with our debris removal solution. It's a ready to use gradient solution that requires just a 10 minute centrifugation step with full break and full acceleration. Depending on your sample type, you may have significant contamination uh, from red blood cells. Red blood cells have very little RNA and will contribute to more background noise rather than making functional libraries. So large amounts of red blood cells in your sample can be problematic. One option is to remove your red blood cells is to use our lysis solution, which only requires a two minute incubation time. 
arguably one of the most important steps in sample cleanup is maximizing your viability. For the best results, viability should exceed 90%. This is because DEG cells leak cellular RNA into the solution, which can increase your background noise and contaminate other cells with non-endogenous transcripts. DEG cells can also still contain RNA and can make functional libraries, but obviously you don't want to analyze those DEG cells. Furthermore, when there are a lot of DEG cells in your suspension, it becomes difficult to distinguish live from DEG cells. Um, so we have a, one solution for this, which is our DEG cell removal kit. It provides a fast and easy option to increase viability. The kit consists of magnetic microbeads that will bind to DEG cells. The cell suspension is then passed through a max column sitting in a magnet and the DEG cells remain in the column while the live cells flow through. And this is all completed in 25 minutes. To demonstrate the impact of sample cleanup on single cell sequencing, we performed a joint study with 10X Genomics to analyze tumor samples after each cleanup step. In condition A, the cleanup is minimal. We just filtered through a 70 micron smart strainer to remove large cell aggregates and debris. Um, and this was from um, a variety of, uh, we tried this on three different types of mouse tumor samples that we dissociated on the Genomax and our tumor dissociation kit. Uh, for condition B, we added in one more cleanup step, which was red blood cell lysis using um, our red blood cell lysis solution. Uh, finally, on condition C, we also added DEG cell removal. In some cases, we found that a single round of DEG cell removal did not yield the desired viability. This can happen when your starting viability is very low, especially if your viability starts below 50%. It's very likely you might need to go through two rounds of DEG cell removal to get up to a 90% viability. So in these samples, we added a second round of DEG cell removal, and this was called condition D. Finally, single cell RNA-seq libraries were prepared with the Chromium Single Cell 3 Prime V2 library kit. We then analyzed the data based on several performance metrics. Cell recovery yielded the most striking differences between each cleanup condition. On the 10X system, you can target anywhere from 100 to 10,000 cells per library. We targeted 5,000 cells per library, which is indicated on the graphs by the dotted horizontal line. When you look across each tumor type and replicate, the number of cells recovered increased with additional cleanup steps. In some samples, the increase in cells recovered was very dramatic, going from uh, 500 to 1,000 cells when in condition A, where we just did filtering, um, to hitting the target of 5,000 cells after we added in red blood cell lysis and one to two rounds of DEG cell removal. There Poor cell recovery can have a significant impact on the resulting data as shown here. The teeth knee plots on the left are from mouse melanoma tumor samples that were only filtered, and the plots on the right were from samples that got the complete cleanup workflow, including DEG cell removal. And you can see how this, uh, how this poor cell recovery could really impact your downstream analysis. Hopefully I have convinced you that it's important to have high viability prior to single cell RNA sequencing, uh, but Milteni's DEG cell re removal kit is not your only option to increase viability in your cell suspension. So how do you choose one that is the best for your experiment? A recent publication compared several DEG cell removal methods from pr frozen PBMCs. It's common to see reduced viability after cryopreservation. They tested four methods for DEG cell removal. Um, so the first was low spin washes. The second was Milteni's DEG cell removal kit, which is called column base cleanup here. Um, the third was a competitor kit. And the fourth was a density based cleanup step, such as our uh, debris removal solution. 
Both the low spin washes and density-based cleanup rely on the fact that dead cells tend to, tend to be less dense than live cells. In the graph on the left, you can see that Milpenny's dead cell removal kit was the only method to result in significantly improved viability. In the graph on the right, the white bars show the fraction of cells that were lost after each method. All dead cell removal methods will result in some cell loss. So it's important to consider what is more important in your situation, increasing viability or having as many cells as possible. For the next step in our workflow, I'll hand it over to Alina now, who will discuss target cell isolation on the MaxQuant Taito. Hello, everyone. My name is Alina Steinbach, and I am a global product manager for the MaxQuant Taito at Miltony Biotech. I am really happy to discuss today with you how you can optimize your genomics workflow with gentle cell sorting. Let's first discuss why cell sorting is so important prior to sequencing. First, we want to enrich our specific target cell populations and improve the reads. Second, we want to exclude dead cells and debris in order to avoid cell-free DNA and RNA contaminations and decrease the costs. However, cell sorting is coming with some challenges. First, if the cell sorting technique is harsh, dead cells might end up in the sample, and this could increase the costs, and also DNA and RNA contaminations in the sample might result in background. Harshness of the sorting can also lead to gene expression artifacts that lead to false results. Another challenge are timely delays due to slow sample processing. And these could lead to gene expression alterations, again ending in false results of your sequencing experiments. Let's have a look at some exciting data. Unsorted cells and sorted cells have been compared in regards to their background. During this experiment, it was found out that unsorted cells had around 50% of reads actually being from a cell the rest was due to high background RNA. Sorted cells, on the other hand, had about 97% of reads coming from the cell and only low background RNA. Showing how important cell sorting prior to sequencing is. On the upcoming slides, I want to discuss how you can improve your sample quality with using microchip-based gentle cell sorting. The Max Quantido cell sorter is a real benchtop cell sorter due to its low weight and small dimensions. It is equipped with three lasers, eight fluorescent channels and two scatter channels. This provides full experimental flexibility and the possibility of multi-parameter cell sorting. If you are interested in more information, have a look on the website, the image brochure or the user manual. At the heart of the Max Quantido, there is a microchip. Let's have a look on the cartridge. The cells are inserted into the input chamber. At the bottom, there is a mixing propeller, keeping the cells at suspension at all times. Cells are sorted into the positive collection chamber and the non-target cells will all flow through to the negative collection chamber. At the bottom of the cartridge, there is a microchip. On the right side, we see this in more detail. Cells are coming from the input chamber into the channels of the microchip. They are crossing the laser beams. And if the system recognizes a target cell, a pulse will open the valve and the cells will go to the positive collection chamber. All the non-target cells will flow through to the negative collection chamber. Here we can see the dimensions of the microchip. See, it is really small. It's even smaller than a match head. Let's have a look at this in real life. The 
valve is opening and closing. Here the green cells are sorted. The valve is really, really fast. It can open up to 30,000 times per second. Microchip-based cell sorting is a very different principle compared to the principle of droplet-based cell sorting. In conventional fax droplet sorters, the process of cell sorting is harsh. Cells are under high pressure. It can be in the nozzle up to 70 psi. Cells do get decompressed and charged while they are deflected from the electromagnets and they are also strong shear forces. Fax droplet sorter systems are open. There are fluidics and tubings inside of the instruments and these are leading to aerosol production and contaminations and also sample to sample carryover can happen. If you think of clinical applications, this poses of course a big problem. Microchip based cell sorting is truly gentle. Sorting happens at low pressure and cells do not get decompressed or charged and there are only mild shear forces. Sorting in the closed and sterile cartridge is safe. There is no carryover, no contamination and also no aerosol production. If you are interested in fast sorting at a very good performance, have a look at our MaxCon Taito Cartridge HS, which is based on the principle of inertial focusing. Let's have a look at how the cells are arriving in a positive collection chamber. For this, an endoscope was inserted into the positive collection chamber, the cartridge was loaded and the sorting was started. We can see here that the cells are easily flying into the positive collection chamber. Another advantage is that cells are strongly concentrated during the sorting process because the valve is only opening for the short time that the cell needs to be sorted. This can save you, for example, a centrifugation step. Operating the Max Quantido cell sorter is easy because it follows a plug and play cartridge system. The sample has to be loaded into the cartridge. The cartridge is scanned by a barcode scanner then it's loaded into the Max Quantido. Sorting is operator free and done by the instrument itself. Remove the sample and collect your cells after the Max Quantido is done. Overall, you can save time with the Max Quantido because it's nine times less hands on time compared to a conventional droplet sorter system. Sorting of fragile cell types is possible with the Max Quantido. Neutrophils are known to be very sensitive and getting activated by any kind of stress. Neutrophils were sorted using the Max Quantido cartridge HS. It was gated on C45 positive cells, debris was gated out, and the cells were sorted by CD60 60 positive and C45 low markers. The purity was very good and above 98%. In a subsequent functional assay, it could be shown that these neutrophils did not get activated. A sign for activation is a CD62L downregulation and a CD11B upregulation. This sign was not seen by the cells sorted with the Max Contigo. A positive control that got stimulated before showed these signs of stress response. Sorting with the Max Quantido is aerosol free. Here is a recent publication. The researchers used dragon green beads and a cyclic D impactor sampling cassette to check for aerosols in the environment. The Max Quantido was compared to a conventional droplet sorter. While the droplet sorter produced many aerosols during the process, the Max Quantido did not produce any aerosols, showing that it is possible to sort biohazardous material with the Max Quantido.
A genomics workflow using the MaxQuad title can look like the following. First, single cell suspension has to be performed. For this, one could use the GentleMax system. Or, for example, cells can be pre-enriched using the Automax Pro. Then cells are sorted on the Max Contido and they are used for sequencing afterwards. Qui at the UCI is working on epithelial cells. He is interested in the diversity of the cells and therefore he is performing single cell genomics. He is taking mammary glands from mice, doing single cell suspension and sorting the cells via flow sorting. And afterwards, he performs 10x genomics. Interestingly, he does a head to head comparison of the Fax Droplet Sorter and the Max Quantido. First, he observes that the cell types and states between the cells sorted on the Tido and the Fax Droplet Sorter are similar. However, when he takes a closer look at the data, he sees that the cells from the Max Quantido gave more gene reads, indicating a better sample quality. He is also looking at the stress response gene expression and he sees that the cells sorted from the Max Quantido had a lower expression of stress response genes. Finally, he also performs a functional assay. Here he performs a sphere assay and he observes that the cells sorted with the Magpantido form bigger and more spheres in culture, which is indicating a higher cell functionality. All in all, cell enrichment using the Max Quantido before sequencing improves the sample quality and reads while minimizing sequencing artifacts and costs. Last year there has been a webinar on exactly that topic. If you are interested, have a look at it. Nuclei sorting is getting more and more important in the genomics field. In order to get rid of any components from the cytosol that could lead to artifacts of the analysis. So it was tried whether the max Contido could also sort nuclei. The nuclei were stained according to a marker that is confidential. This experiment was done with a collaboration partner and according to a staining with DAPI. After the sort, it was possible to reach a purity of nuclei above 95%. I have to say that in this experiment, because it was a feasibility experiment, DAPI was used as a marker but before sequencing analysis, we would recommend to use 7AAD to stain the nuclei. I want to show you some recent publications using the Max Quantido prior to sequencing. One example from COVID-19 research is coming from Patrick Wilson and his colleagues. They are working on B-cell subsets. Another example from COVID-19 research is coming from Petra Bacher and her colleagues and they are interested in the T-cell memory. A study working on biomarker identification is using oligodendrocyte progenitor cells. And there is an example from non-human primate research where they sorted retinal cells. You can find more examples of publications here. Alexander Johnson and his colleagues are working on endothelial cells in the pancreas. If you are more interested in this study, there has been a webinar on the topic. You can watch it on lab roots. Researchers from Italy are working on conventional dendritic cells in COVID-19 patients. This is another great example for sensitive cell sorting and biohazardous cell sorting from COVID-19 patients. On the next two slides, I want to give you a bit more details about the workflow that these researchers have used. Here's again the example from the non-human primate research and they sorted retinal cells from macaque, which are really sensitive cells. First, they perform sample preparation using the neural tissue dissociation kit, postnatal neurons. And then 
With this single cell suspension, they go to the max quantido and sort the cells and afterwards they perform sequencing. Petra Bacher and her colleagues used a quite complex workflow and this is shown here. First, they isolate PBMCs from whole blood, originating from COVID-19 patients. Then they stimulate the cells using SARS-CoV-2 peptidator peptide pools and they perform an enrichment according to an assay called Rapid Art. This is an assay for the rapid antigen reactive T cell enrichment. After this, they use these antigen specific T cells that they have enriched and sort according to the dual expression of CD69 and CD154 on the MaxQuam title. With these cells, they go for sequencing. So let's sum up all this information. Microchip based cell sorting is gentle for the cells. Sorting in a closed cartridge system offers the operator as well as sample safety. Very sensitive cells, such as neutrophils or retinal cells, can be sorted without harming them. We have seen a presented example for single cell sequencing, and this showed that sorting with a max quantido prior to sequencing improves the sample quality and reads while minimizing artifacts and costs. Also, nuclei can be sorted successfully. And with this, I want to thank you for your attention, and we are happy to take any of your questions. We now have time for some Q&A. Uh, so we're getting questions in here by the chat. So I'll go ahead and read it out loud. Uh, this first question is for you. You said that sorting with the title is aerosol free. Has infectious material been sorted on the title? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. Thanks for that. Um, yes, indeed, infectious material has been sorted on the title, um, especially in these current times uh, with the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, we do have several labs that are sorting um, patient material on the MaxCon title. But there are also researchers who are working on other viruses, such as HIV, for example. Um, in addition to that, other pathogens have also been sorted on the maximum title, for example, bacteria, yeast, um, and also plasmodium parasites um, can be sorted. And after these sorts, there have also been um, bio burden tests, and they could confirm that with the max quantido, you can get your full sample containment. Great. Our next question here is, uh, looks like it's going to be for me. Is Milteni going to make a kit for cold dissociation? Um, so yes, this is definitely something we are exploring right now. So stay tuned. We'll be having even more solutions for sample preparation specifically designed for single cell sequencing um, in the future. Okay. Um, so another question for uh, Lena. Um, is it possible to sort rare cells with a frequency below 1% on the title? Yes, absolutely. Um, this is possible. Rare cells can be sorted on the MaxCon title. There are many labs um, in the research, but also in the clinical field, uh, who are working on antigen-specific T cells, antigen-specific B cells, regulatory T cells, and also MSCs um, from primary material. And yeah, these cell types do have really low frequencies. Great. Great, so um, another question here. Can the debris removal solution be used to remove dead cells? Um, yeah, that, so there's a lot of different ways that you can remove dead cells from your tissue. So the debris removal solution is actually one way to do that. And it really depends on your sample type, whether you'd want to do 
for example, the debris removal solution, the dead cell removal kit, or flow sorting is also an option to remove dead cells. Typically, if you're using the debris removal solution, you also obviously have a lot of debris to remove. Um, so if you have such a significant amount of debris, you obviously can um, clog the column for the dead cell removal kit, or you can clog your flow sorter. So in those cases, your best bet is to actually do that debris removal step. Um, and uh, you might find that after debris removal, your viability is actually uh, adequate to move on to your single cell sequencing. Okay, um, so I have another question for Elena here. Uh, the question is, I have used flow sorting before and my samples are very dilute. What dilution factor should I expect if I use this sorter? Yeah, um, in conventional droplet sorters, um, there's the sheet fluid and um, of course this can dramatically increase um, the volume of your sorted sample. And yeah, that might be the reason for the dilution. Um, of course, for downstream applications, oftentimes you need a higher cell um, concentration and um, a centrifugation step is thus often needed. Um, with the max quantito, you do not have um, fluidics in the instrument. Everything is happening in this closed um, cartridge and therefore there is also no um, sheath fluid. This yeah, that leads to a higher cell concentration of your target cells or nuclei in your sort chamber. Um, and the reason is that the valve is only opening for this really short time where the cell is um, led through the um, positive collection chamber. Um, and yeah, a really minor amount of buffer will come through this. So you actually get a higher concentration of cells um, after sorting on the max quantido, which can then yeah, save you, for example, centrifugation steps. Oh, that's a nice unexpected benefit. Okay, we have time for one more question. Annex, are, hum are the human and mouse tumor dissociation kicks interchangeable? Um, so obviously we recommend the human uh, tumor dis dissociation kit for human tumors. Uh, this actually also includes um, patient-derived xenografts that are uh, human tumor cells but grown in mice. Uh, so, I, um, while I can't say that they won't work on each other, we do recommend um, the human tumor kit for human tumors and the mouse tumor kit for mouse tumors because we do know that they have different consistencies and they've been custom tailored to each tumor type. Uh, moreover, for both the human and mouse tumor dissociation kits, we have an epitope preservation list that is specific to that kit. So if you have certain epitopes that you are very concerned about preserving, definitely check that list and they're not exactly the same. So you might find um, one epitope is preserved in one kit, but maybe is slightly sensitive to the enzymes in the other kit. Okay, well, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you everyone for your attention and tuning in. Thank you, Alina and Karina, for your time today and your important research. Before we go, I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today. I'd also like to thank our sponsor, Miltony Biotech, for sponsoring today's webinar. Questions submitted today and during the on-demand period will be addressed by the speakers via the contact information you provided at the time of registration. This webcast can be viewed on demand for two years until April 21st, 2024. LabRoots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with any of your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time, goodbye.